The Chaos Dwarf economy can be very confusing and can be very frustrating depending on how you approach with it. As to begin with, there's a lot to learn and this video will serve in helping you understand exactly what you should do with the economy. Let's talk about what raw materials do and why they're so important in the early stages of the game to put a lot of priority towards. Well, raw materials in the early stages of the game will give you the ability to upgrade your settlements. So uh, alongside of the towers, you can then snowball to get higher tier units and higher tier uh, things in general. You're going to require uh, raw material to upgrade infrastructure, excluding advanced military. So raw materials is a very key component in the early stages of the game and it will allow you to upgrade your factories at the same time. And you also require within the infrastructure section, you need raw materials to produce armaments. So raw materials will grant you the ability to produce armaments. And this is the reason why it's quite important because you have the upgrading your settlements elements to it. And you also have the upgrading your, uh, and, excuse me, producing armaments section. So how does it work and how do we produce it? It's a great question and you need to produce outposts because within an outpost you will have the strip mines which will uh, produce 200 raw materials a turn but you need a unpaid internship of 300 to make sure that you can get enough workload in this province to produce those raw materials as it is a direct relationship between the two. And as a generalized rule of thumb for raw materials, I would recommend you go for one province raw materials and okay, the outposts and then one province factory which will allow you to have a surplus of 50. So you can see here that we have raw materials 200 per turn and in a factory it consumes 150, which will allow you to gain a surplus of 50 raw materials, putting it towards building um, new settlements or putting uh, and upgrading your factories or your towers, which is very important to do. But this is subjective to your campaign. If you're in a situation where you have way too many raw materials, which since we've moved around the average efficiency, we now are in that case. So. What I'm going to go ahead and do is look at the labor economy and we can see that um, the province that I, is not making very much. We can see mountains of hell here. Let's go to that. As you can see, this is a confederated province. So in this case, I could transition towards having factories. So what I could do is this outpost could turn into a factory, which would become very useful because of the fact that I have way too many raw materials and I don't really necessarily need this many. And I need to start pumping it towards armaments as this makes logical sense. Let's talk about the labor economy aka the unpaid interns. Right now it looks very bad as I'm making minus 560 raw materials per turn. But this is because of the fact that my uh, I've just confederated Astrogoth and we can see that I have a lot of provinces that do not currently have any kind of uh, laborers, aka unpaid interns in there. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to grab all of these laborers from here as I don't have I don't need to have a, an awful lot in the side because you can see that I'm still got 100% efficiency. So what I'm going to do is yoink all of the laborers out of here. So we can see now we have the Githel Mountains. Let's go ahead and put enough of our laborers in there to produce some raw materials alongside this province as well. And let's go ahead and do the same for this province. And let's just basically go around making sure that all these provinces have enough laborers inside of the province to consume and produce raw materials. As we can see now that I have uh, distributed my laborers across, and everything's 100% efficient. And let's go ahead and accept that. And now we're 100% um, labor efficiency. And now we're consuming or uh, creating 4,000 raw materials. So your labor economy is extremely important. And how you can easily get uh, laborers is obviously doing tons of fights and continuously uh, making sure that you're in combat. Alongside of that is I would highly recommend raiding Zana Grund if you so choose to. And just raiding factions in general as that is an extremely effective way of making... Uh, your economy for your laborers. Alongside this one, I'd recommend that you were to go into the uh, overseers. And as you can see, the overseers can have brutal, despairing, and the harsh masters, which will allow you to produce a army composition made of predominantly goblin laborers. And you can see that an army composition of roughly about 600, and you can have a you know a raiding doom stack per se. And this is a very effective way of getting yourself laborers. Alongside of this one, I would massively recommend all forms of military convoys were to be sent out to produce laborers. This is my 100% recommendation as you can gain laborers like crazy through the military convoys and this will be how you will produce the majority of your laborers to keep your economy sustained. Also in the places in which you have the uh, laborer workload make sure you're taking in laborers into these provinces just so you don't have to consistently move and transition around laborers. 
So armaments are all things military, so building the advanced military alongside of Hellforged options. It's a way you increase the caps of the units in which you want to recruit alongside uh, basically utilizing the Forgecraft upgrades, and that consumes armaments every single turn. So armaments is required to allow your late game units or your units that are chorfs to snowball significantly and make their combat prowess increased drastically. So as we previously discussed, it'd be recommended to make sure that you're um, producing a one-to-one -one relationship between outposts and factories. But if you're ever in a situation where uh, you're making too many uh, outposts, say for example here, I'm going to go ahead and convert this to a factory because this is going to be a perfect place for me to uh, start producing ornaments again. So what you want to make sure it to do is uh, transition between the two. If you have too many on production, convert them into outposts and stop making and consuming too many raw materials. It is subjective to the situation and it is the reason why it's quite hard to explain as it's dynamic to your specific campaign. So if you're struggling with armaments, roll back the production um, of raw materials and transition that towards armaments. Because keep in mind, an armament production does not consume any kinds of labor. If you're struggling with laborers as well, roll it back a little bit and then start transitioning from raw material production to armament production, and then just try and find a perfect medium that works well for your campaign. So to give an honorable mention to Conclave Influence, basically Conclave Influence is um, gained by your tiers of your settlements, the higher the tier of the settlement, the more Conclave Influence you will gain. So any province slash settlement in which you take, um, you will gain Conclave Influence for. So if you were to take loads of tier one fa factories and outposts, you would gain plus two Conclave Influence. So expanding is a great way of getting a lot of Conclave influence. Alongside of um, doing these sacrifices as a Zana Grund, this is one of your best ways of getting early game Conclave influence to allow you to absolutely dominate the Tower of Zar. Easiest way to do that is just do as many sacrifices in the early stage of the game and you'll start getting that massive power spike from the Tower of Zar. Thank you so very much for watching. I hope this helped you. I've had a lot of questions and wanted to make a quick guide for you guys to snowball and succeed in your Chaos Dwarf campaigns. Have a wonderful day and take care.